this huge stock listed multi-billion dollar company and I had the problem that after 10 minutes I found out that there was a, a misunderstanding of what a link on a page going out of the page and a link to that page wasn't clear. To that person that was probably responsible for 500 jobs just in Germany alone. Yeah? So right now, just to clarify, I'm talking only about links going from outside the web or from outside your website into your website. For the simple reason that this is the secret of Google. I'll get to that in a moment. But everything that probably the conference covers besides that is about content where you link out or where you do internal linking, which is important too. Uh, but this is a picture of the web. And if you try to answer the question, are links important, you have to look at this because what we see here as the nodes or the dots are websites or maybe pages on websites. And these edges here, also called links, are the connection from A to B. And this is not about an href tag. This is not about a JavaScript link. This is about a path for a human going from one piece of content to the other piece of content. This is true inside your website, but also outside your website on the whole web. If a search engine, as they always say, tries to understand what we as humans do, you cannot not use this. The web is content and links. And you cannot not see it. Who of you heard that Yandex actually turned off their links and as a search engine? It was like three years ago. Yandex turned off the links and still wanted to serve search results. That was true. For three months, then they turned it back on. Google themselves confirmed in 2016, October 2016, that ranking without links is really, really hard. It's not impossible, but really, really hard in most cases. This guy here who called himself search quality senior strategist at Google, which is Google speak for senior developer, said, what are you talking about the third ranking factor, which was um, rank brain or is rank brain? Number two and number one are content and links. That's what made Google popular. In 1989, this guy, Sir Tim Berners-Lee, invented the web. And the web was hypertext, hypermedia. You know, back then, some of you may remember those CD-ROMs, multimedia CD-ROMs. That was multimedia. And that guy invented a connection from A to B and called it hyperlinks. And suddenly the web was complete. And it doesn't matter which technical implementation we look at. The idea to follow people where they surf the web or could surf the web is what made Google successful. And this is still the core of Google and all the other search engines that somehow compete with Google or are comparable. Um, who of you knows HubSpot, a content marketing um, product, marketing automation? Head of global marketing, um, now with two names, even harder to pronounce, Matt. Um, I know him for, for, I don't know, 10 years. Just tweeted this a couple of weeks ago. There's hardly anything than awesome links to push your rankings. And they specifically have a product that sells and supports, of course, content marketing, creating great content and waiting for links to come. Well, who have you tried that? Writing great content and expecting links to come in and lots of visitors. <laughs> hmm? Works awesome? Hmm? No, of course not. I'll, I'll say some words about that, but there is a little piece of the puzzle missing that I'm going to talk about. Links have a huge interest in the industry. We have over a thousand new software trials of our software package per month uh, of link research tools. Um, okay. So how to build those great links? Some ideas that still work. I could talk for weeks. We have a multi-day training just for special cases, but some ideas that still work. And I want to start with the most interesting one for many of you, because many agencies and Google scares the hell out of you to not buy links. Oh, you shouldn't buy links. You get into trouble. You violate the terms and conditions, blah, 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 blah. And because of that, we shouldn't buy links because we will penalize you. Yes. Who of you does Facebook advertising? Come on, Facebook ads. Okay, and who of you was recently throttled down by Facebook because you did too much of engagement baits or cat content or would you rather drink Coke or Fanta stuff? Huh? Any of you? Okay, it happens to companies with multi-million dollar budgets that the engine that they paid throttles them down and changes the rules. 
if they find out that it has been gamed, just it has been gamed for many years with links. Okay, when it comes to links, you want to find the right ones. You want to do risk assessment on links before you build them. There was a time until 2012 where you could build, and Michael here in the audience knows exactly what I'm talking about, where you could build any link and nothing would happen or something good would happen. And then Google changed the rules so that either positive effects or negative effects would happen, which is actually not surprising now looking back. Anyways, we don't want to get caught by Google. I don't want to say buying links is without risk, but isn't that true for about everything in life? Or in other words, just following the terms and conditions of Google does not guarantee good rankings, and Google went on file saying that as well. Okay, having great content and amplifying that. Gentlemen, you built great content. Did you amplify it, which is a buzzword in the recent 12 to 20 months? Did you amplify that great content? Did you send out some emails about that content? Did you buy some Facebook ads for amplifying that content? Which is, means giving that content a wider reach. Anyone doing that? Or just, yeah, okay. Did it work? You're happy with the results so far? Or at least you got a little bit out of it, right? You made sure that the content is, yeah? It's better than not doing, exactly. And with micro segments, with custom targeting, uh, that actually Facebook got on the fire a lot recently, you are able to put content in the front of an audience that potentially either buys or shares or links. Yeah? This is one way to do it. Sending it to an email list is another way to do it. I'm sure the privacy laws uh, changing will scare some people off from cold lists, which you shouldn't use anyways. But just sending it out to your existing customers is something that a lot of companies do anyways. Those companies do not, that do not use their newsletter list to get their customers or their fans see their audience are writing that content for nothing. Every potential reader is a potential linker. Okay, there are software solutions for using mass uh, emailing in a smart way, like Pitchbox, which is a product we integrate with. Sorry. Um, by the way, who of you enjoys the spring weather? Yeah. Who of you has a pollen allergy as well? Ah, great. <laughs> It went great last year, so I didn't take any medications until this morning. So that's why my eyes are red, in case you noticed. Um, we, we have some educational products about building such link networks or buying links. Um, for those of you who are not aware what this is, buying a link on some website is what gets you started. Buying a lot of websites and connecting them to something that is actually a part of the web and making it look really, really smart is what a lot of large brands do. A lot of large brands build small artificial parts of the web. When I say small, I mean a couple dozen, maybe a couple hundred, and employ an army of webmasters and content writers and outreach people to artificially build that part of the web that they fully control. This is where it goes for large companies in verticals that need organic search. Who of you knows an example of a company or a vertical and industry that needs link building, that needs SEO, where you cannot get away with, oh, we do AdWords, we do Facebook? Porn sites, of course. You run porn sites? I, I worked for the biggest porn sites in the world many years ago, so I know a, a thing or two from that agency business. We were in all of these um, verticals. Another example, who cannot advertise on Facebook or AdWords? Gambling. Of course, gambling, uh, gambling yeah? pharmaceutical products, or uh, most of them. I mean, uh, legislation changes in many countries, but there is something very popular. Who of you is not happy that Bitcoin dropped to 7,000. Huh? They just cut it all out. The whole market of crypto just suddenly needs links and SEO because they cannot advertise anywhere. So all of these loans, credit cards, payday loans, cash advances, mortgages, all of that. And all these companies, the bigger ones, build their own networks. Um, 
Okay, and some of you may have heard about Google always taking care of this and penalizing, and this is true. If you overdo it, if you get too big, if you try to shortcut it, Google goes after you. Large companies suffer that. Um, smaller companies, not so much. We looked at some examples, and in January, we looked at 43 manual actions that Google took that fell into that time frame where, let's say, the industry or the scene, the SEO scene, talked about PBM penalties. The truth is, there was no PBM penalty at all. It was just made up fluff, another scare tactic, um, fear, uncertainty, and doubt are typically, let's say, mechanisms that Google uses. What we just saw is strong pages with overdone anchor text optimizations, which means people were too greedy and, let's say, too risk-taking. But the good news is you can undo these things fairly quick if you know your money anchor text ratios. If you don't know your distribution of link texts in the world, then you have a problem. If you don't know what your competitors' anchor text ratios in their backlink profile is, you don't know what blends in, so you don't know if you and when you have overdone it. These are things that we analyzed for many, many years. Um, in a nutshell, you can say that great links <laughs> don't fall from the trees or get served from a silver plate. Thinking outside the box today is more important than ever. Again, if you search the web on how to build links, if you search the web for these forums, um, blog posts, a lot of free knowledge is dangerous because everything that is from pre-2012 gets you in trouble. Everything that is, let's say, not so much to read and comprehend that you can read it on your phone, I would not even start looking at. Most of the time, uh, it could be misleading. One of those things I want to still address because it's been going around in the last weeks in the SEO industry, it's called fake links. Uh, actually, not fake links, but it's an old but still working trick. Um, company profiles are like companies. We write about your company, we put this in your press profile, we're gonna write a great interview with your CEO and your CEO and your CEO, and then all these companies feel really, really um, pampered, ego-stroking, and link back to me. Your company links back to me because I interviewed a CEO, your company links back to me because I interviewed a CEO, etc. And that is also called the reciprocal linking. And Google would figure that out and take it out of the equation. And the simple and old trick is, and you can look at that with a free browser extension that we have called Link Redirect Trace that many SEOs use uh, for Chrome and Firefox. The simple trick is simply make that page where I link out to you a no index. That's a technical directive for avoiding that page getting indexed or followed by. You can tweak this. There are, let's say, now at least 15 different variations of how to do it, which we all display here. Um, but if you see some red, then this is a red flag for that link that you just got out of this data. Yeah? It's a little bit technic, uh, technical, but actually easier to spot. If you do this in bulk, of course, Link Research Tools has you know, the capability to analyze hundreds or thousands or, or millions of links to do that. You don't want to do that one by one. Um, and we have a couple more details. So, for example, if you're getting links from websites <clears throat> that specifically block some specific bots, like Ahrefs bot or Majestic bot, it means someone is sitting there knowing that they don't want to see their links. Someone is trying to hide the links from typical link products, link database or link analysis products. Uh, that actually is a red flag too. Because we are a link analytics product as well, I have to say, we do not comply with the robots directive. This gets us a lot of complaints. But our job is not to be a nice bot, our job is to find links. And that's a trade-off be between you know, being not so nice let's say, according to some guidelines that the ITF came up with, and providing data for competitive advantage. And you need that in some industries, um, yeah, because you could get into trouble not seeing all your links. Watch out for toxic redirects. Who of you does redirects on the website himself on the HE access? Okay. The other ones more or less rely on 
Yoast SEO, who of you uses Yoast SEO? Show of hands. Okay. And the other ones use other plugins, I guess. And they all, they all use a 301 redirect, which is actually also recommended by Google. The problem is, and we found that in 2013, if you have a website that has toxic links, that has a penalty, you can get into trouble with that redirect. Who of you did a rebranding or a domain name change in the last five years? Did you make sure that the website that you redirected does not have a penalty? You still have Google Search Console connected and checked out if there are any penalties? Did you do a link audit on those links? Because in May 2013, the rules changed and that redirect passes on the penalty. And we wrote a lot of case studies, one for a big retailer called Home24, who got themselves into trouble, not with bad linking tactics on their main brand, but actually previous websites that they migrated over in 2012, in 2011. So Google changed the rules in hindsight. We need to be aware that not only the tax authorities change the rules in hindsight and penalize us. Google also does that and did that. And here's the, the thing that, you know, who, who knows the name of this little character? Anyone? Come on. Gary Isles. Gary Isles or Gary Ilias. I, I never know how to pronounce this. It's, I think it's Portuguese, but he's a, it's a press speaker or webmaster relations is so to say that the press, rela that the, the press relations team from Google to webmasters. And I met him many times, but in September I walked up to uh, the stage where he just came off and gave him one of the shirts with his you know, nice character on that we printed uh, thousands from actually. And he said, you do a, fa a fantastic job or great job of reminding people about the importance of links. And we don't appreciate that. Because that is still that one thing that Google needs that they cannot fix themselves. They cannot, and they tried. Even Matt Katz many years ago confirmed that they tried to take links out of the equation and confirmed that this is the one strong signal that although it's spammed, although it has negative aspects sometimes to rankings. Negative from their point of view is that we push the rankings. Yeah? Keep in mind, SEO does not mean just following the Google guidelines. SEO stands for search engine optimization, or if you want for search engine ranking manipulation. Just playing by the book and making your website clean, fast, HTTPS, SSL, fast converting, this is what you want anyways. This is an hygiene factor. Nobody wants to work in an office with a spoiled toilet. Nobody wants to visit a bad website that is slow, where he feels insecure. But that doesn't get you better rankings. Google promised better rankings. Anyone follow that? You get better rankings if you put on an SSL? Trick? You? Yeah. And? Did you get better rankings? Did you also clean up other stuff at the same time? Yeah, I, I've not found a single isolated test for that. And I think it's great to put websites on SSL. I think it's great that websites should be fast. Websites need to be pleasant for the user because if websites are not, then users don't use it. And then Google returns shitty results from a user standpoint. But that is not necessarily a causation. Just because a website is fast doesn't improve its rankings. Yeah? All things being equal, all having the same links, then the faster website wins. Anyways, Google said, sometimes we figure all of this out. You don't need to worry. Actually, Gary Ilias said, um, quote, I don't like the disavow tool. I don't use it on my own website. That's what he said. And this goes into this, uh, we, we figure it all out themselves. And on the other hand, at the same time, a question for all the bad links or just bad links. And we have seen a lot of recoveries in the last one and a half years. Tremendous recoveries where companies, big brands like Hertz, Eastern Europe could 5x their traffic by just cleaning up their links, fixing some redirects. It's not that they did anything bad. We just cleaned up trash that they earned. You get bad links naturally on the web from scrapers. But let's imagine for a moment that Google would 
change the outers and rules in hindsight and make all bad links work negative. Let hundreds of thousands of websites then drop overnight. Google would never do that, right? Google doesn't do evil. Who remembers that statement from Google? Huh? Who of you remembers when it was taken out of the, the official Google? Huh? It's like a couple of years ago already. It's not in there anymore. It worked really, really great. A whole generation of webmasters followed it. I didn't. Anyways, in 2012, Google changed the rules in hindsight. And that's the thing called Google Penguin. It's in its current version number 4.0, an automated link spam algorithm still that works on a granular level. So even single keywords, single pages, single folders could be demoted, could be penalized, could be you know, pushed back in the rankings. Real time means a single crawl can affect your rankings already. Real time is not really real time, but from a search engine point of view, it means the moment they crawl it, they can recalculate that. And that was different in 2012, where the rankings dropped essentially overnight, but only when everything was recrawled. So thousands of websites dropped overnight, and it looked like that. And if all your traffic drops overnight, that's not a fun time. You come to the office on Monday morning, who of you experienced a drop like that? The phone doesn't ring, IT is crazy, everyone's had a red hat, marketing's fault, it's technical's fault, no, the website is broken, all of these things, and some companies did not notice this for weeks. They didn't get any new traffic from Google uh, for a long time. And that changed. <coughs> However, it can now silently hold you back, because if only some important folders go down, you do not anymore expect a penalty like this. This was a great time when we've been around 2012 already to diagnose. If you have thousands of websites that drop and thousands of websites that win, you can collect a lot of data like we did from 10,000 of penalties because we gave away our product for free and then analyze. Today, this is all soft and it drops down a little bit, a little bit, and some people don't even know they have a penalty on some. They blame the content, they blame the website speed, they blame the SSL, they blame the keywords, they blame the conversion rate, they blame whatever, anything. And don't even look at the audit uh, of their backlinks. Yeah? So it could silently hold you back and make your efforts worthless. There's a simple trick to, you know, at least check that off your list. It means auditing your backlinks, looking at your backlinks. Who of you did a backlink audit in the last 12 months? 24 months, three years, four years. Who of you have never done a backlink audit or looked at his external backlinks? Okay, who of you is too intimidated from this question? <laughs> um, there's a lot of different ways to do audits like that. But most of them suck because it always has to do with taking some link data looking at that and saying it's fine. It's like going to the dentist and saying, hey, check this tooth here. And if this tooth is okay, the rest of my teeth is not. So this is why we specialize in our product and underdoings for many, many years to combining so many different link data sources. Uh, in general, when it comes to should we do this? Oh, I don't need that. Google's gonna take care of this anyway. I don't care about this camper guy. You want to be better safe than sorry. If you work for a company that does so many different things and you cannot say, we checked this off our list, we can cross out that the backlinks are even remotely responsible for what we're seeing and a negative, then what are you doing in a data-driven marketing space? So are link audits and link mon monitoring important? Let's remember for a moment that <coughs> links bring you real traffic. And when I say real traffic, I mean people clicking on it and buying stuff. Let's forget SEO, let's turn off Google. They can lead to actual purchases. A link that is broken will not do that. So any broken link is a problem anyways, regardless of Google and the other search engines. But the good ones help you big in Google and other search engines. Uh, for instance, we have a lot of new business now from the Eastern Europe and Russia. I don't know what's going on there, but they seem to get more and more money. Um, so Yandex plays a role. 
Of course, the opposite is possible too, and a link can be totally worthless. Now it can even be, you know, risky. It can hurt your rankings in Google and other search engines. Because Bing, Yandex, they all have their algorithms to penalize. Does it make sense to watch those links? I say yes. And therefore, a link audit guide that we have is a self do it yourself uh, handbook, if you want, an ebook, a thing with 80 pages, uh, is super popular in our Link Research Tools Academy. Um, at the SMX Munich, I even made a presentation about some free links, uh, free link tools. Uh, so there's plenty of stuff that can get you started. The takeaway is you don't want to leave this up to Google because all the webmasters from the past 15 years that left it up to Google were screwed. They were screwed. I've seen them all screwed. That's the truth. It's your website, it's your traffic, and you expect Google to do good for you. And this will work as long as it's good for Google. Who of you does schema markups? Hmm? Ah, great stuff. Let's make it easier for Google to index all of that and then put it into the carousel, huh? Let's replace all those travel sites with my own travel finder. Would never happen, huh? They spend too much AdWords. Oh wait, it just happened, right? In some countries. I would not leave all of that up to Google, especially not if you get 140 character recommendations on Twitter. This is a little bit more from Gary uh, on Facebook, where he talks about how it's not about sites getting demoted, but parts of the website getting demoted. So a quick reminder is to monitor important folders and pages every day for their rankings. If you drop in rankings for uh, your folders for some keywords, this is a problem. And who of you has a disavow file already? There were some. When was the last time you looked at that and removed some disavows? Huh? Ever? Remember that panic attack in 2012 when you wanted to disavow everything to get out of a penalty maybe? Maybe the web has changed meanwhile. It's been six years. And we see uh, who of you has taken on a client, maybe agency, a client from another company and has earned or, or inherited a disavow file. That should be a main topic whenever you take on a new job as a webmaster. Is there an existing disavow file? I can tell you in my disavow file for my company, one trainee added two very special disavow commands. One was for adobe.com and the other one was for SEMrush. Who of you knows SEMrush? I mean Adobe, I guess we all are aware. That was a link I earned in 2004. Super trusty, super worthy. And this wrong, therefore, is a way to build great links. And when you look at your past disavow file and you realize there are some good links in there that shouldn't be in there, you can take it out. But please make sure you boost a link detox boost this uh, topic. Thank you, 15. Uh, to make that disavow file work faster. Uh, for those who may be confused by the disavow file. That's a simple text file where we can tell Google this and this and this link or this and this and this domain should not count. Yeah. Okay, so which links matter? Go for high trust links. What's a high trust link? It's websites like BBC or newspapers. But be careful with newspapers, for example. Newspapers engage in link selling. Some of them engage a lot in link selling, and that makes them a potential target for Google spam algorithms. So just because you think it's trusted doesn't mean it's trusted. And therefore we have a way to emulate a risk of a link before it's actually built. You want to go for low or very low risk links in the first place. So again, I also call this a time machine for links. With all the data that we have and the knowledge that we have and the past six years of machine learning on spam links and what Google did to those spam links, we can simulate what would happen if you get a link. Fun fact is, I even got sued in 2014 in Germany. This thing was tested in German court and the German court decided that this is actually in line with what Google does. 
someone thought, this is all bullshit, I don't like it. It was a link seller, of course. He didn't like my judgment and therefore he sued us big time and we won. So um, that was quite annoying to prove to the court, but I think it worked. Um, yeah, and how this works is, if you have a list of links, where you, uh, a list of websites where you would like to get a link or can buy a link or have a friend that would, you know, like to have another drink and would then place a link for you tomorrow or have this interview with a CEO that, you know, needs a link back. You could just put it in a list, simulating all of this together with our data and then we would spit out the risk before the link is built. Because the problem is, if you have that link, it's already toxic by the moment it's built and crawled. You want to avoid that so you don't have to clean up later. Okay, so which links to work with and which to audit? I said it before and I repeat again. It's of utmost importance that you look at all the links, not just a fraction. It's a tooth example. And I give you um, lots of smart people in the room. You all know statistics, I guess. Extrapolating data. You know, when, what they do when the election is up, Brexit, United States, they have some statistics, some numbers, a little sample, and then they try to decide, is it A or B? Is it president this or president that? We know that that didn't work so well, and maybe Facebook had their fingers in the play as well. But essentially, statistics is about deciding A or B or C from a defined set. What we're doing here is the orange piece of the cake is unknown number of domains and domain names. You cannot extrapolate domain names. You cannot extrapolate places where a link is. Unless you crawl the whole web as big as possible by combining the data, you don't know where those links are. So, and then you find the good, the bad and the ugly. And of course we want to keep the good ones. We want to disavow the bad ones. We want to tell Google, hey Google, these links are bad and I don't like them and so you shouldn't count them for me. And again, Google, there are some rumors, Google will figure it all out by themselves. And the simple reason why they would not do it is if you look at their HR profile. 99.9% .9 of Google employees are what? Google AdWords ad account managers selling advertising on a search engine. We all know Google as a search engine for organic rankings, but the core product is actually very small. Google is an advertisement company that sells ads on top of this search engine, on top of a second search engine they bought, YouTube. And there is a couple, let's say 20, 30,000 people that we call webmasters or SEOs that game or, or work with that search engine. And that's about it. Yeah? It's a small portion for Google actually. They don't have the time or the resources inside allocated to do all that. Because really, they don't care too much on many things. Although they might say different. But in industries, that are very competitive. We see all of this on a regular basis. All of these tricks work, all of these tactics work if there's enough fire in the market. If you work for a, let's say, boring niche where there's little competition, if you only have five competitors, you don't need SEO at all. Because then you always have 10 results on the first page and you should be one of them. Yeah? If your website is fast, has nice content on it and has SSL. Okay, but the ugly ones we want to repair. What's an ugly link? It's a broken link. It's a broken link where people cannot visit my website anymore. It's maybe a link that goes to a previous version of my website. So maybe I'm just finished migrating from a .php kind of site structure to clean URLs using Yoast SEO. I hope all those redirects are there. Um, if not, Looking at the server logs alone is not enough. Most of the time we find a lot of, let's say, ancient links from long time ago going to parts of the website where there are no visitors. I'll give you an example for financial sites, websites that have been around for 10 years. Uh, whenever a new company is started, it's usually registered 
with whatever a bank directory, a finance advisor directory. All of these links are in long, long, very reputable but hard to get lists. Yeah? Same with essentially every company. So we find that the bad and the ugly ones often hide in this bigger chunk of not so fresh links. If you just look at the links that you got in the last couple of weeks, couple of months, maybe in the one, last one, two years, for many companies that's not enough. So who of you is confused now? Oh, thank you so much. I was waiting for some of you. I get it. I tried to achieve that in a certain way because I needed to pitch you on the Link Research Tools Academy. I can say that there is more knowledge that I can you know, provide in a day, in a week. Everything off-page, everything linking, redirects, penalties, let's say is a certain art or a certain part of SEO and SEO is already a niche inside online marketing. Everyone who wants to make you believe that all these connections that are talked about are not important or are not worth looking at doesn't have the time or the resources or the will to look into that. So this is why we only do linking. We do only backlinking. So we have a couple trainings, an online training like the LRT Associate that you can do in a couple hours to get deeper into this topic. We have two day workshops, one in Vienna end of April in English where we have one seat left and one in German. And we even have these uh, you know, info products or e-books e uh, as you may know them, uh, for example on how to build such a link network. They already start at a certain level of technical detail and if you're interested you can actually get that at 50% off until next week. If you would like to hear more about my background from software development, building a company and how I learned coding with my dad age of 10 so I could build my computer games at 13, then I have 20 books for you that I can sign with you for today, with today's date. So you can later on say you got one of the early works from Christoph because I'm writing the second book already. And the one last thing that I have here is we're searching for developers. Surprise, surprise. Any developers in the room? I've been sitting in a developer session before. Maybe you know something that knows some, uh, know someone that knows someone. Um, full stack React, Java backend, tester, tech writer. Um, and just to be clear, we're not just a backlink checker. A lot of what we do is actually competitive research and trying to make sense of all the data. Combining a lot of link data is not the objective. What we do is we look at that and try to understand for websites what makes sense to actually pursue if you are selling let's say pet toys you have huge competition anyways with Amazon everyone knows that you've got Amazon and, and eBay there so it starts with a simple question of you know does it actually make sense to spend my time and money on that this is usually not done and I'm talking about large companies not knowing what they're doing because they spend tons of money on some, let's say, keywords or verticals or products that they cannot win. That's the truth. It's 2018. Competitive analysis should actually be in this image here, the first one, is learning. But because it's a circular thing, it's okay. We start here. We learn, we grow, then we recover, then we protect. Um, yeah, if you're passionate, love to work hard with a great team in a nice place, learn from the best in an exciting industry, and think that you can make a difference, then I want to meet you. This is what I would ask you to pass on uh, for my team. You can now ask me anything and I think I'm done in time, right? <laughs>